Hello guys, welcome back to another video of things that I find useful when I am researching or for research purposes. This video is going to entail my otoplasty surgery. I'm going to be talking about it in today's video so um, I don't know maybe this will reach somebody that is researching it maybe you're about to undergo it yourself and you want to know a little bit more about the procedure and what to expect then this video is for you maybe you're just curious in which case this video is also for you so let me start with surgery date when I got it done I got my surgery done on the 16th of June 2021 we're now in October so June July August, September, October, so about, I'd say, if we round it to four months post-op, I'm now four months post-op. For those of you unfamiliar with what an autoplasty is, I also had bilateral, I believe, or bilateral, which means that basically it is prominent corrective ear surgery. So in layman's terms, if your ears stick out, <laughs> they uh, remove the cartilage, they cut it and then basically pin them back in layman's terms. <laughs> so that's what I had done on the 16th of June, 2021. You might be thinking, why would anybody want to do that? Well, it's quite simple um, insecurities. I've had protruding ears ever since I was a kid. Very often people's ears are like this, sort of glued to the side of their head. And in my case, they were just like this. I'll obviously throw up before and after pictures so you can see them yourself. And it's such a difficult thing to try and, well actually no it isn't difficult at all. If you want to try and see what it would look like on yourself just get your ears and flip them out. <laughs> Hold them out. <laughs> and then see if you like it, I don't know. But ever since I was a kid I always knew that it was something I was going to have done. Um, I would always kind of compare myself to other people and just such a dumb reason but the ease that they would have to just throw their hair up so effortlessly effortlessly or scrape it back into a messy bun in PE for example which is physical education when you're at school um, swim classes when you're at school you know like all of these little things you just you do because it, you, your teachers will moan at you but it was such a I don't know the right word for it it was just made me uncomfortable you know because I had a physical attribute I didn't like there was something physically on me that I did not like and I, I had to see it every day and oh my god that makes me sound I sound like a brat so apologies usual disclaimers not encouraging anyone to do anything they don't want to do I'm encouraging you to do what you want to do and if this is something you want to do then here is the advice and my experience. Even in previous videos I would rarely wear my hair up and if I did I would always be pulling these bits out of my hair to cover my ears. So, so funnily enough that made making hair content quite difficult actually. And if you have been there yourself then I won't need to explain my reasonings as to why I wanted to get them done. Uh, because you can relate to it right off the bat. I remember the, all of these videos that I would watch whenever I was researching it, you know, it was a case of it suck, putting, basically putting your hair up sucks. <laughs> the day of surgery, what to expect day of surgery. I, number one, cost, didn't actually pay too much. Uh, you shop around a bit, I would seriously encourage you to shop around, get some quotes. Um, obviously meet with some surgeons etc etc but mine actually ended up costing me about £2,100 uh, I think 2140 or 2140 something within there prox 21 and um, I really like my surgeon he was really cool <laughs> and essentially you go in I went in in my normal clothes they tell you that you can either take it off but you're going to have a uh, like a a medical gown on anyway. I didn't have to wear any compression socks because I know some people in their vlogs that I was watching they had to put on compression socks and things like that. So I went under, oh, was it local or general? I'll clarify, the less intense one where you're, you're awake throughout the entire procedure. Um, so what they do is, and if you're used to getting any type of dermal filler or Botox, then essentially they just get a needle you walk into the operating room, they lie you down, they ask you to lie down on your side and then they grab your ear and they just stick the anaesthetic so it begins to numb this area 
in your ear. It feels just like if you were to get a blood test or Botox, I'd say, because filler is actually lip filler is far more painful than Botox. It just feels like a little scratch. And then they ask you to lie over on your other side, and then they numb this portion as well. And then they give it about you know, you're, you're chatting, they make the environment comfortable. My surgeon asked me what music I wanted to listen to. I wanted to listen to John Denver, Country Roads. <laughs> so he put that on and basically just got to it. What they do, I believe, is they essentially grab your ear and then they cut like the cartilage and then they yank it back <laughs> they're never going to be perfect don't expect them to be twins because they're not twins what you'll feel during the procedure is nothing you'll feel a tugging sensation and it will seem as if have you ever been underwater and you when you splash underwater you can kind of hear like muffled noise um, well, not like muffled noise, it, what you hear will be muffled because you're underwater, something is clogging your ears. That is the sensation that you will hear and that is the sensation that you will feel. It just feels like uh, someone's cutting into something, you are aware of that. But in terms of pain, you will feel no pain during the actual procedure. I can categorically say it was painless. Surgery overall, I'd say the prep. Overall, I believe I was in there for about maybe an hour and 20 minutes, but the actual surgery itself is very quick. It was maybe, I want to say, 30 minutes, maybe even less, of the, my surgeon actually correcting my ears. And then basically what they do is they wrap you up well and good. <laughs> and the advice that they give is that you now just need to shush. You need to be quiet, you need to be still, relaxed, zero stress. You can't be immediately like swinging your hair around and being quite animated. I'm quite animated when I speak anyway. Um, so you just have to really, really take it easy because you're coming down off of anesthesia. And so for the first couple of hours after surgery, you're not gonna feel anything and you're probably, it's quite misleading because you think, oh, this is great. I was even a little bit swollen actually. So just do bear that in mind. It can be slightly uncomfortable um, or just sort of annoying, but you won't feel any pain in terms of your actual ears beginning to throb or anything like that once you've come off. <laughs> that happens later. <laughs> also, long story short, now I absolutely love them. I love my results. I put my hair up with these. I feel like these were the ears that I were always supposed to have. But the recovery, <laughs> Now let's skip to the recovery. The recovery is horrible, quite frankly. Um, make no mistakes about it. I appreciate everyone's pain threshold is completely different. Your tolerance could be far greater uh, than mine. But I would say it was about a good seven hours after my, after coming home, um, that's when the pain really began to sink in. And the pain feels like continuous, throbbing like this but it's painful it, it's like when you stub your toe but continuously and it's your head um that's the best way of describing it it just hurts if you've ever experienced any kind of pain or discomfort that's the feeling it hurts a lot your recommended paracetamol if paracetamol doesn't work then you're advised to take something stronger i'd recommend that you do at the advice of your doctor because paracetamol did not work for me at all in the slightest it wasn't even touching the sides it was excruciating the first night i think i slept about two hours maybe intermittently because the throbbing sensation just kept me awake and it really was yeah very painful you obviously have to sleep upright as well, propped up. If you are getting this surgery and you're worried about that, just Google how to sleep on your back. Basically what I did, two pillows either side, one pillow under my legs, one pillow propping up my head. And I'd also recommend that you buy a travel pillow. <laughs> Don't get, I have two, I made this mistake, learn from my mistakes. Don't get the memory foam one right away. Or if you do, 
You can wear this one just to keep your head in place while you're up and moving around, but I do not recommend sleeping on a memory foam one. Very often people would recommend that you can sleep on the donut because obviously there's a, a hole here. Well, I can't and I'll tell you why. If you're anything like me, I don't just sleep like this throughout the entirety of the night and don't move. I move my head a lot. So then you're gonna need to wake yourself up to move it to the other side <laughs> and ensure that you're not getting your ears. Also, you have a huge bandage on your head, which makes that, it's, this entire area, like here, is so sensitive to the touch that I don't recommend even trying to lie on it for the first four days post-op up anyway, at all. So if you're going to buy one of these, I, which I suggest you do, but I don't, I mean, you can try it, whatever, I'm not your mother, obviously, but I literally had it propped up so when I was sleeping upright, I was like this. And sleeping sucks. <laughs> Make no mistake about it, I'm not gonna lie. Like, unless you can take something to knock you out, Sleeping is truly the worst part. Um, pain begins to subside and you can shower. I was recommended, I believe it was like 48 hours. It was around the four day mark. I began to return back to normal. I felt like myself, the pain was really subsiding and I felt amazing. Oh my God, I felt so good. I had all of this energy just out of nowhere. <laughs> and I was then able to kind of sleep more so rather than straight upright it was more so i could position my head like this and then like this but i still would not be able to sleep like this because it just moves around it doesn't stay in one spot so sleeping is going to be tough you're just going to have to do it you're going to have to make the sacrifice and try and do it on your back benefit of that i woke up with no wrinkles around my eyes so <laughs> <laughs> if you're like prone to getting smushed skin whenever you sleep on your side you're welcome <laughs> but no sleeping was an absolute nightmare for the first four days and thereafter as well you know it was like a week post-op you go in for your follow-up they can then take the dressing off a week post-op um you'll still have your sutures in that's then for me at least the next week, so it was one week post-op and then two weeks post-op, I had to have my sutures out. Important to note that even after the address comes off, your ears are still incredibly swollen and tender. They're bruised, they're battered, they're just grumpy. What I now recommend after you've had the head wrap off, because they, you know, you're, you're gonna need to have your ears in something to protect them, are these. I bought a whole pack of these I don't recommend getting any compression garments because your ears are still kind of throbby and tender and sore to the touch anyway. And these are just, oh, they're so amazing. I love these so much. Literally just wrap your head round, boom, go to bed. <laughs> they're the best, I love them. Um, you can wash them as well. They're really comfortable to sleep in. In summary, the pain was a really unpleasant experience. It was horrible. I, I hated every minute of it and I was incredibly and I was in entirely miserable throughout the entire duration. And then wait it out for four days and you'll be fine, basically. And you'll love it. There's no way, if your expectations have been managed and you don't think that they're gonna be like so far back that you can't even see them, then I guarantee you will really love the results and appreciate them for what they are. And even now, four months out you're still gonna have a little bit of tenderness a little bit of bruising you just are like your ears have gone through trauma there's been trauma inflicted to that area that with every surgery there are always risks and complications involved which your nurse and surgeon will explain to you on the day and then once again thereafter you obviously have to sign consent forms to ensure that you understand that I started exercising again three weeks after surgery because I felt well enough to but they do recommend that you wait four weeks but I was able to resume fairly nothing no hit nothing like that but just sort of more strength training and low impact modifications for example about three weeks after I 
I hope you found this video useful, informative, or if you're just maybe a little bit nosy, then I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything that you think I might have missed that I didn't cover in this video, then please just leave it as a question in the comments below and I will endeavor to answer you ASAP. But in the meantime, you guys, have a lovely day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.